if you need to make a tough decision in your life, what would you do most? Probably, you would ask around to know what others would do in your position. Then, after taking into consideration their views, you will make your final decision. Well, ensemble learning follows a similar approach. It involves multiple machine learning models, each providing its prediction. The final prediction is made by combining the outcomes from these models. Ensemble learning is a technique in machine learning that combines multiple models to make better predictions. It works by creating a team of models which are called base model or weak learner. Base models can be decision tree, logistic regression, neural networks, etc. The idea is to take advantage of the strengths of each model and compensate for their weakness. By combining their predictions, the ensemble model becomes more accurate and reliable. You can pause the video if you want to write this down. Now, there are several ways in which we can implement ensemble learning. Bagging, boosting, and stacking are the most common ones. Let's look at each of them one by one. Bagging. In bagging, a data set is divided into multiple subsets through a process known as bootstrapping. Each subset is used to train a separate model, often using the same machine learning algorithm. Each model learns from a slightly different perspective because the subsets contain different samples. This diversity allows each model to capture unique patterns and make slightly different predictions. Once the models are trained, they are used to make predictions on new, unseen data. In case of classification problems, each model votes for the class it believes is most likely. The final prediction is then determined by majority vote. In majority voting, the class that receives the most votes from the models is chosen as the final prediction. For regression problems, a common method is to take the average of the predicted values. Pause the video to write the working of bagging, which we just saw. Bagging has several advantages. Firstly, it helps to reduce the impact of outliers by training each model on different subsets that contain different instances. This diversity enhances the overall accuracy and stability of the final prediction. Additionally, bagging mitigates the risk of overfitting, where a model becomes overly specialized to training data and performs poorly on new data. However, there are also some disadvantages to consider. Firstly, bagging increases the computational complexity as it requires training multiple models. Secondly, there is a potential for reduced interpretability compared to using a single model, as the reasoning behind the predictions may be harder to understand and explain. Lastly, there is a possibility of overfitting if the models become too complex or if the training data is limited. In the previous video, we touched upon the random forest algorithm. Random forest is an ensemble learning technique which utilizes bagging. Boosting In bagging, we parallelly train multiple models, whereas in boosting, we train different models sequentially. The process starts with training an initial weak learner on the entire dataset, assigning equal importance to each instance. After training, the model's predictions are evaluated and higher weights are assigned to the instances that were predicted incorrectly or misclassified. In the next iteration, a new weak learner is trained with focus on the instances that were misclassified in the previous iteration. The weights of these misclassified instances are increased, giving them higher priority during training. This iterative process continues with each subsequent weak learner learning from the mistakes made by the previous model. Finally, the predictions of all the models are combined using average or majority vote, taking into account the weights assigned to each prediction. Here is a summary of the process we just saw. Boosting can handle complex relationships in the data through iterative training. It can also improve the ensemble's generalization capability by iteratively focusing on misclassified instances during training. However, it is also more susceptible to overfitting as compared to bagging, and it also lacks the parallelization capability as it follows a sequential approach. Boosting is quite prone to noisy data on outliers. Boosting algorithms such as AdderBoost 
gradient boosting and extreme boost have gained popularity due to their ability to build highly accurate models. Stacking. In stacking, the whole data is given as input to base models. Then we use the predictions from base models as input to a new model called the meta model. The meta model can be any machine learning algorithm like decision tree, neural network, etc. The choice of the meta model depends on the specific requirements of the problem and the nature of the base model's prediction. The meta model learns from the predictions of the base model and smartly combines them to make the final prediction. By combining the predictions through the meta model, stacking can potentially improve overall predictive performance and generalization. Note that stacking requires careful model selection, training, and validation to avoid overfitting. The base models should be diverse and complementary, and the meta model needs to be trained on reliable and unbiased predictions from the base models. Also, there is a potential for the propagation of errors from base models to our final prediction. Here is a table describing the difference between backing, boosting, and stacking in different criteria such as combining strategy, training approach, and impact on overfitting. In this video, we covered the basics of ensemble learning and the techniques that come under ensemble learning. Thank you for watching.